Welcome to week three, topic one. Our first topic is testing hypothesis. Why we test hypothesis? What is statistical hypothesis? Under what condition we accept and reject hypothesis? Let us understand the whole concept with the help of an example. In a standardized achievement test on mathematics, the national average of standard nine students is 72 with a standard deviation 6.8. Find whether the students of standard 9 of your state are performing at national level. First, select certain number of students that is sample of standard 9 students randomly. Let it be 90 that is sample size is 90. A standardized test is administered on the sample. Let the mean of the sample be 68. So what is the size of the sample? 90. What is the sample mean? 68. What is the standard deviation? 6.8. Now let us estimate the population mean. Mean of all students of standard 9 of your state. Now the big question comes to us, how? From the sample mean 68, we want to get a complete picture of the population mean of your state. Whether population mean is equal to 72 that is the population mean is at national average how will you find it here we need to go for testing the hypothesis please remember this is the reason why we need to test hypothesis the situation forces us to set the hypothesis test the hypothesis and go for the analysis and interpretation first step first let us set up null hypothesis and then alternate hypothesis. Null hypothesis states that mean of the population is equal to 72. That is, there is no significant difference between the population mean and the sample mean. Alternate hypothesis states that mean of the population is not equal to 72. Null hypothesis implies that mean of the population is equal to 72 from which a sample of 90 is drawn randomly whose mean is 68. Alternate hypothesis states that mean of the population is not equal to 72. Please remember null hypothesis is one which we want to disprove. Alternate hypothesis is one which we want to prove. So we are trying to reject null hypothesis and therefore alternate hypothesis represent all other possibilities. Therefore, null hypothesis is called statistical hypothesis. The most important question, what is statistical hypothesis? Why a null hypothesis is called a statistical hypothesis? A hypothesis is never proved or disproved. It may be accepted or rejected with certain level of confidence or at certain level of significance. Now, let us calculate the second step that is calculation of standard error of mean sigma m keeping in view the size of the sample may be a small sample or a large sample which we have already discussed in detail in the previous module in the current example our sample size is 90 n is equal to 90 so it is a large sample standard error of mean is equal to standard deviation divided by root over of n so 6.8 by root over of n which is equal to 0.72. So standard error of mean is 0.72. Coming to the third step, let us decide the level of significance alpha or the level of confidence at which the hypothesis is to be tested. This is very important step in testing the hypothesis. The level of significance is to be set prior to the test. This is the criteria to accept or reject the null hypothesis. That is level of confidence we have in rejecting the null hypothesis and alternatively what percentage of risks we can take in rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore the level of significance has to be set prior to the test. Before we initiate the test the level of significance is to be finalized. It depends on the nature of phenomena under investigation, type of the test or the nature of the 
test. Generally, in research study, we use two levels of significance. Remember, this is very important. One is 0.5 level of significance, where we take 5% risk in rejecting the null hypothesis. We call it 95% confidence level. Second is 0.01 level of significance. We take 1% risk in rejecting the null hypothesis. That is, we call it 99% confidence level. 0.1 level of significance is more accurate than 0.5 level of significance. Why? Because remember, at 0.1 level of significance, the chance of error in rejecting the null hypothesis is only 1%, whereas at 0.5 level of significance, the chance of error is 5%. In statistical analysis, we do not consider level below 0.5 level of significance. For more precision, reduce the chance of error in drawing conclusion, we may take 0.005 or 0.001 level, etc. In module 2, we had already discussed at length about the critical value at each level of significance or at each confidence level. Now, for the present problem, let us test the null hypothesis at 0.1 level of significance. We will check at 0.1 level of significance, then we will check at 0.05 level of significance. Let us first take alpha, that is the level of significance is equal to 0.01. So the z value is equal to sample mean minus population mean divided by standard error of mean. So 68 minus 72 by 0.072, that which is equal to 5.55. So our z value is 5.55. This is called the calculated value. So the critical value at 0.1 level of significance is 2.58, mod z is 5.55, that is the calculated value. Here the calculated value 5.55 is greater than 2.58 critical value. That is we can say that calculated value is greater than the critical value. So null hypothesis is rejected. There is significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. The deviation is marked significant at 0.01 level. Such deviation may occur at best by 1% of cases. Probability is 0.01 or even less than 0.01. In case, consider if mod z is less than 2.58 critical value. Suppose our calculated value will come less than 2.58. Null hypothesis is accepted. Null hypothesis is accepted means there is no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. The difference between sample mean and population mean is due to fluctuation in sampling. The minimum difference or the marginal difference that arises between the sample mean and the population mean is due to fluctuation in sampling or due to sampling method. Such deviation may occur at best by 1% of cases. So probability is equal to 0 0.01 or even less than 0 0.01. That is probability of chance of error is 1% or less. We can conclude that mean of all students of standard 9 of your state is not 72, is not at par with the national level. Now let us consider at a different level of significance. 99% cases lie between population mean plus minus 2.58 z. So probability is equal to 0.99 that sample mean would lie between the range population mean plus minus 2.58 z. So p is equal to 0 0.01 that sample mean would lie beyond population mean plus minus 2.58 z. Area between plus minus 2.58 
standard error of mean that is minus 2.58 standard error of mean to plus 2.58 standard error of mean negative side to positive side is called area of acceptance that is area of acceptance of null hypothesis which is considered to be 99 percent so the area of acceptance of null hypothesis is 99 percent area which are beyond minus 2.58 sigma m is called the area of rejection of a null hypothesis that is only one percent the value 2.58 is called critical value at 0 0.01 level of significance similarly we can test null hypothesis at 0.5 level of significance where alpha is equal to 0 0.05 that is 95 percent level of confidence that is confidence level with critical value 1.96 note if the difference is significant at 0 0.01 level it holds good for 0 0.05 level also but it's not always true alternatively this concept is very important you need to understand you need to remember you need to completely have a clarity of the level of significance at 0 0.01 and 0 0.05 now coming to the last step that is to state whether the test is a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test this the detail about the type of test will be discussed in the next chapter of this module you are going to respond to the forum questions review the document and finally assess yourself with the help of a short quiz i wish you all the best